Alright, ladies and gentlemen, today marks the official launch of AMD's first Ryzen 3 CPUs on the Zen 2 7 nanometer manufacturing process. The two new offerings include the Ryzen 3 3100 for $99 and the Ryzen 3 3300X for 120 buckaroos. When the chips were first announced, my initial thought was, how the heck are these possibly going to compete with AMD's own Ryzen 5 1600 AF, the refreshed 12 nanometer 6 core CPU that's been an absolute steal at just $85 here in the US? Or at least it was. That's right. At the time of filming, this chip cannot be found on Amazon or Newegg for much less than $150. It's unclear if this is due to the Ryzen 3 launch or if it's simply supply and demand, but whether the price will come down again or not is uncertain. Either way, the chip is still in the running because it has two more cores and four more threads than the quad-core Ryzen 3 parts and a little more L2 cache. Not to mention 150 bucks may not be out of the question for a six-core processor. So today we'll be pitting AMD against AMD to see which of these three budget CPUs makes the most sense for gaming. Other tasks like streaming and editing won't be covered in this video, so we'll be looking at these chips strictly from a gamer's perspective. Now, as for AMD's actual competition, throwing Intel's 9th gen Core i3 chips into the ring feels a bit irrelevant when their entire 10th gen Comet Lake S stack launches later this month. I suppose a follow-up video including the new Core i3s may be in order, but today, AMD alone will be locked in the throes of Civil War. Circling back to our contenders though, the fluctuating price of the 1600 AF makes it kind of tricky to place, but today's benchmarks will show how it stacks up against Ryzen 3, helping you decide how much to spend on it, or if it's even worth buying anymore. As of this very moment, the Ryzen 3100 appears to have dethroned the 1600 AF as AMD's cheapest new offering while shipping with higher clock speeds. The 3300X boosts even higher out of the box, trouncing the 1600 AF's boost clock by 700 megahertz. Of course, none of this matters too much if you plan to overclock. Unlike clock speeds, however, physical core count cannot be changed by the end user, and that's the big leg up the 1600 AF has on Ryzen 3. Fortunately, the 3300X has a trick up its sleeve. It may have fewer cores, but the four cores it does have share the same CCX for a 4 plus 0 design. Meanwhile, the 1600 AF implements a 3 plus 3 design, and the 3100 sports a similar 2 plus 2 design. To top it off, the 3300X has a unified L3 cache, with all 16 megabytes on the same CCX as its cores, resulting in lower latency and better performance. The fact that it's not just a Ryzen 3100 with different clock speeds certainly makes it more interesting. Apart from that, all chips share a 65 watt TDP and include a Wraith Stealth cooler. For testing, all benchmarks were run in the system I recently put together for Wifey Sauce, since she's still in the process of backing up her old PC. Please don't tell her. To eliminate heat as a limiting factor, I used the Fractal Celsius Plus 280mm AIO and removed both side panels of the case to create an open air environment. You can see the rest of the hardware specs and driver information on the left of this slide. Also note that we will be testing with two different GPUs today, the EVGA RTX 2060 KO and the MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming Trio. While there's bound to be no shortage of reviews testing these chips with RTX 2080 Ti's in order to expose CPU bottlenecks, I thought I would switch things up and show you how the processors scale with some GPUs you might actually consider pairing with them. Since every game was also tested at 1920x1080 and 2560x1440, the following benchmarks will showcase how the CPUs perform in a multitude of real-world scenarios with different GPUs and resolutions. Diving right in with 3 Mark Firestrike. As you would expect, CPUs paired with the faster RTX 2070 Super line the top of the list, with the 3300X and 1600AF going tit for tat right out of the gate. Here we also see the 3100 trailing behind by a measurable amount. In Time Spy, the graphics points even out across the board, while the 1600AF leads in overall scores. The 3300X is positioned firmly in between the 1600AF and the 3100, which makes sense given the current pricing of all three chips. Now our first game title is Ashes of the Singularity, where we see the 3300X take the top spot with the RTX 2070 Super. Interestingly, when paired with the RTX 2060 KO, the 3300X still manages to deliver more frames than the 3100 and 1600 AF when paired with the RTX 2070 Super, perhaps revealing just how fond this title is of CPU core frequency. It's no surprise then that the 3100 and RTX 2060 KO beats out the 1600 AF with the same GPU, as the Ryzen 3 chip has higher clock speeds and IPC thanks to its 7 nanometer architecture. It's also worth noting that there's little change in frame rate between resolutions down the chart, indicating a heavily CPU bound environment at 1080p. In Borderlands 3, performance seems indifferent as to what CPU is being used, potentially indicating a GPU bottleneck. For all we know, we could have dropped a potato in the motherboard socket and seen the same results. 
you can see just how much faster the game runs when we drop the resolution to 1080p, taking load off the GPU. In the Division 2, when paired with the RTX 2060 KO, our CPUs are neck and neck at 1080p as this is a GPU intensive title. Performance starts to pull apart, however, once the RTX 2070 Super steps in. It's safe to say that the 3300X's favorite position is on top. 1440p is the great equalizer for the most part, as our GPUs go from breathing heavily to pooping their pants heavily, struggling to keep their heads above 60 FPS. In Far Cry 5, the 3300X takes the top two spots with either GPU, while the 1600 AF falls to the lower half of the chart and trails behind the 3100. Like many games, this title clearly favors core clock speeds over actual core count. At 1080p, the 3300X's strong lead over the other chips could also be attributed to having lower latency thanks to its 4 plus 0 design. Naturally, moving to 1440p closes the performance gap between all chips significantly as the environment becomes more GPU dependent. In Overwatch, the 3300X reaffirms its dominance, but the other chips are hot on its heels, potentially performing on par when factoring in margin of error. This especially makes a good case for the super affordable Ryzen 3100. In Resident Evil 2 The Remake, the 3300X leads by a hefty margin at 1080p, almost edging out the 1600 AF and RTX 2070 Super with an RTX 2060. However, this time around the 1600 AF bests the 3100 at both resolutions, albeit by a slight margin. Like Borderlands 3, we're yet again heavily GPU bound in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with the only meaningful reaction to any CPU being the 3300X alongside the RTX 2070 Super. When looking at the RTX 2070 Super results, notice how dropping to 1080p doesn't get us many more frames with the 1600 AF or 3100, but we see huge gains for the 3300X as it enjoys higher boosts and lower latency. Now after totaling up the average frame rates of all seven game titles, Here's what the overall performance looks like for each contender. Predictably, the top three slots go to our RTX 2070 Super pairings, above the blue line, with the RTX 2060 KO combos down below. Assuming you're thinking about pairing one of these chips with a high-end GPU like the RTX 2070 Super, you can see that on average, there's virtually zero gains to be had by opting for a 1600 AF over the 3100, with 1080p uplift resulting in less than 1% and 1440p performance going unchanged. Bumping up to 3300X sees about a 9% increase in average FPS over the 3100, and about 8% over the 1600 AF. That's not a huge draw, especially when these chips can be overclocked to squeeze out more performance. Similarly, when paired with an RTX 2060 KO, our CPUs do little to distinguish themselves from one another. The 3300X is clearly the fastest gaming chip of the three, but costing 20% more than the 3100 ensures that no one will be frantically pulling out their wallets for these single percentage gains alone. We can also see that as far as today's tests are concerned, the Ryzen 3100 and 1600 AF deliver virtually the exact same gaming performance on average. As mentioned, it's unclear where pricing of the 1600 AF will eventually settle, but assuming you can find it for roughly 130 bucks or less, I would still recommend it over the Ryzen 3 chips due to its higher core and thread count. Now at the start of this video, I said these results would be looked at from a gamer's perspective, so you might wonder why I wouldn't favor the 3300X. But like I mentioned earlier, core frequency can be adjusted by the end user in the form of overclocking, while core and thread count cannot. Yes, the 3300X can be overclocked too, but it's already operating at a higher frequency out of the box, so it's bound to have less headroom than the 1600 AF, which as a reminder, is a rebranded Ryzen 5 2600 that's been found to hit 4.1 gigahertz on all cores easily with adequate cooling. Even if overclocking the 1600 AF isn't enough to surpass a stock 3300X, which it probably isn't, the 3300X's lead is not big enough to justify giving up two more cores and four more threads. As developers continue optimizing their games to leverage more and more cores, the 1600 AF is more equipped to handle the games of tomorrow, and even plenty of the games of today. These tests reiterate that most modern titles are still very GPU dependent, which is why you can pair a CPU with a graphics card five times its cost with little issue, but certainly not the other way around. Obviously, if you plan to do other things besides gaming like streaming or video editing, my recommendation swings even more heavily in the 1600 AF's favor, with its superior multi-threaded performance. I couldn't resist running a quick transcoding test in Handbrake to find that the 3300X took 15% longer to render out a 1080p file than the 1600 AF, with the 3100 taking around 7% longer. This is by no means an end-all example to these chips' multi-threaded capabilities, but it does show that the 1600 AF is well-rounded, and while it might not be AMD's fastest budget CPU for gaming, it is still, in my humble opinion, a better overall value than the quad-core Ryzen 3 chips. 
again, if you can find it under $130. At $140 or $150, I think you might as well spend an extra 20 bucks for the Ryzen 5 3600, netting you the best of both worlds, six cores and a seven nanometer process node. It goes without saying that the 1600 AF loses much of its appeal when it costs nearly twice what it did a month ago. Having said that, if there's one case I can make for Ryzen 3, it's actually for the 3100. If the 1600 AF never returns to its old heavenly prices and you're absolutely strapped for cash, the Ryzen 3100 is a viable choice at 99 bucks. That leaves the 3300X in an awkward position as I wouldn't spend 20% more for its single digit percentage gains, especially when the 3100 can still be overclocked. Another thing that can be overclocked is the like button. Make sure to give it a good smashing for the insatiable algorithm that's oh so thirsty for all of your likes. Also subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a bunch of new content on the way. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a good one, and I will see you all in the next video.